child's father is already serving life in prison for the girl's death, and on Wednesday, her mother heard her fate in the Kent County courtroom. This video contains the interview of a woman who allowed her infant daughter to starve to death. On August 2nd, 2018, the police knew they needed to brace themselves to deal with the death of a child, but nothing prepared them for what they found. Inside the filthy home of Seth Welsh and Tatiana Fusari, Mary Welsh, the 10-month-old daughter of the couple, was lying in her crib. The child was barely eight pounds and so thin that not only were her bones protruding, but the outline of her intestines was visible against her stomach. An autopsy revealed that Mary had not been fed for days and had been slowly starving to death for an undetermined period of time. Hi. Hey. Tatiana, this is my supervisor. We've seen each other, but I don't think we've met. I'm sorry for your loss. I know that uh, obviously the last thing you want to be doing is this. So we haven't spoke yet. I know you've already spoken with Jason. Uh, my name is Jason as well. Um, but some of the same stuff that I gotta turn this brain off. Some of the same stuff that he's already talked about. I wasn't there when you guys spoke, so I'd like to go over some of that. Um, obviously, he's already advised you of your constitutional rights uh, up at the scene. You still remember those rights? Mm -hmm. it's, um, Thank you for clarifying. Yep, no problem. Uh, do you want me to read them to you again, or you're still good to go? All right. Uh, like I told you, you're not under arrest, but because you're in this fine facility, would you like to just remind you of those? So, um, really, what I kind of just like to do is just uh, to get a better understanding of how we are here today and kind of go back a few years even just to get to know you and your family a little bit. So, okay. do you go by Tantiana, or do you have a nickname? Tantiana. Tantiana? Okay. Nickname from you can just give us an easy nickname. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. How many children do you have? Sorry, five. Three. Three. Okay. Yep. <laughs> right. And, and, yeah. And, and Mary. Mm -hmm. Okay. How old is your oldest? Four. And how? And your oldest. so. Um, at the scene there, I was told that verbal. Is that true that he doesn't, or uh -huh. he's very verbal? He's very verbal. Oh, I, I don't know. Someone, and you know how he gets mixed. In, uh, you whisper in one person's ear, and as it goes down the chain, uh -huh. maybe he was just being shy. So that's he didn't get shy. But yeah, he did. He did some high fiving for me, but um, he knows lots of words. He's just um, sometimes big sister can be a little. Dominating. So maybe that's what it is. Him, but, um, and probably all the commotion probably really made him shy. And didn't, yeah. I didn't wanna, so maybe they were just saying he was nonverbal right now. Maybe that's what Possibly. it was. Um, medical issues or any, nothing like that? Okay. Not at all. And for, is she in any kind of daycare? Does she go no. to have preschool? Um, no, I homeschool. I have my, um, my degree in early childhood. Oh, you education, do? Okay. So Good I for you. thought I'd just, being at home at the farm, I can. At least give them an initial education before yeah. they decide to send them off to the grade school. Absolutely. So, has Absolutely, you? Yes. Okay. I like what kind of stuff. She is fluent in her alphabet, her numbers at least up to 20. Yeah. Usari gives the impression that she has invested a lot of care and effort into her older children, which is inconsistent with the level of neglect that the infant Mary experienced. Um, although she knows other numbers like 160, but not in sequence. Um, okay. She's practicing her writing. Mm -hmm. um, she just has a little issue with the numbers. They get a little backwards. But, um, okay. She knows how to spell words like hi, cat, dog. Oh. Um, she knows the list that starts with E. She kind of do better than Jason. The hi and the cat and dog part. Um, <laughs> so does um, a doctor that she sees, does she have a primary doctor? Not anymore. We okay. did have She's great and everything. We just uh, we only go if there's an issue and there just hasn't been. Oh, good. When, when she was two. Okay. And I'm what was that for? A checkup. Do you know what clinic he's with? It's his own practice. Okay. Um, I know it's in Rockford. Do oh. you remember where in Rockford? Okay. That's right. No big deal. So 
She she was there for her two year checkup. Mm -hmm. Was she ever there prior to the two year checkup? Yes. For That's what eighteen month checkup? Eighteen month. Any other one? Uh, no, we had her. Okay, um, so so prior to the eighteen month checkup, she was with a different doctor. Yes. Do you don't remember that? Okay. She was the one that um, called previous on us because we. What were your occasions to be with him? Um, her preliminary vaccinations. So where? Metro Byron, and then, so from there, the, off the top of your head, you remember? Maybe, maybe six months. Six months. Maybe. Yeah, I won't, I won't hold you to it. I know it's a while ago. And so at early six. Early enough for her to get, it was, we were, um, yeah, early enough for her to get her vaccinations, and um, we were consistent with it, and then afterwards, we, we just did a lot of research, and we didn't feel the need to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lindstrom was very gracious with us and understanding and yeah. like, you actually don't have to do that at all. Mm -hmm. After a bad experience at the hospital with one of their children, Seth Welch, Fusari's husband, refused to allow the children to be seen by doctors at all. If you haven't already, I highly recommend visiting my Patreon page for exclusive and ad-free videos, including the intense interrogation of an officer involved in a routine traffic stop gone wrong. Listen to the shocking events that unfold as an officer crosses the line and employs excessive force. This case offers a glimpse into the unsettling reality of when the actions of good people become entangled in tragic circumstances. Watch this video and explore many more at patreon.com slash stranger stories plus. Okay. We'll do four to six if you want. Okay, and so at what visit, obviously it was probably the last visit, mm -hmm is when he recommended the helmet, the yeah. head shaping. But so there was never any concern about the shape of her head from zero to 18 months? No, it, and it, that's why it was such a concern for us as to why he would just bring this up out of out of nowhere. And so what was the problem with the shape of her head according he to him? He said it was, it was off. It was just not circular. And I mean, I wasn't offended. I was just taken aback. And then um, my uh, Seth found out that a, it's commission based with these products that they try and push. Uh -huh. So um, we don't know specifically. This is here today. Sure. But we think that we'll he's trying to push the helmet. It was a three thousand dollar helmet for and called GPS and said that we were being neglectful or, or something or other. Okay. And uh, then that's when we went to. So was it the first time he ever pushed that home? Was it right around the 18 month? That's the first I time he I believe so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless he spoke to Seth otherwise, but I, I doubt it. I've never even heard of a head shaping helmet. Have you, have you ever seen young children? It, it looks like um, some children with Down syndrome will wear it, and it's just, it like cuts here, and it cuts like that. And it's big and clunky. Maybe I have seen that. Maybe I have, yeah. It, it looks quite invasive, and I just am heavy. Or like have neck problems or back problems, and she didn't need it. Right, 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 yeah. So, um, the two year checkup after that, we haven't needed a How is the shape of her head? <laughs> Wonderful, we've seen her. <laughs> yeah, so that, that worked out just it was okay. Yeah. How does that work? Wonderful. Was that, was that a choice? Yeah. Was that like, um, what do they call it, like a uh, midwife or something? Yeah, it was a home birth. Okay, so how does that work? When you choose to have, first off, I mean, why did you go from being from her in a hospital and then some transformation here where you said we want to do um, um, the birth. midwives? Yeah, yeah. The, um, being at the hospital was very invasive. They uh, with me. After she was born, they wanted her out of the room. They wanted us there for three days um, because uh, apparently I pushed out a lot more fluid than they were expecting. So she coughed. Uh -huh. I was like, oh, we need to keep her for testing. And then um, I had to mix it because they just wanted to charge us more. To keep I don't know. Mm -hmm. Conspiracy theory, yada, yada, whatever. Yeah, they but, never know, though, right? Exactly, right. you don't. So I just think they wanted to keep us there for three more days, and then we had to they wouldn't like allow me to see her except to nurse and they were saying, Oh, you can just keep her close here. And don't worry, well, you can rest. I don't want to see my baby. Yeah. And then they would have like Wick come in and give me information and then you wanna have newborn portraits? No, can I just go home? Right. 
Right, right, right. So we just didn't want any more. So that just turned you off to the... And having a home birth right after uh, I gave birth, Seth went out and bought me a pizza and I ate that whole pizza. <laughs> right after <laughs> hey, I gave birth. Bonus. Right on my couch, so... <laughs> So, you're, how does the midwife work? Is that through a hospital, through a clinic? How do you reach yeah. it? How does this, how does um, this work? Google. <laughs> oh, okay. I just searched on midwives in the area, or um, also there are Facebook groups like Home Birth um, in West Michigan, Cedar Springs um, Home Birthing, and I just asked a lot of different women for advice. Um, While there are many people who are trained and skilled enough to provide safe home births, there are some that have no credentials or experience and could cause great harm. A Google search is not the best way to search for something of this nature. And given Fusari and Welch's general treatment of their children, it is doubtful that they did much research about the person they chose. So now what is a, what, what is a midwife? Is it someone that knows what they're doing, or can I be a midwife? Uh, you cannot be a midwife. You okay. need medical training. Well, okay, that's, a, that's what okay. I wanted. So they, it's, is it like actually a certification? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. um, and she... She's been training with her grandmother. Excuse me. No, well, that's all right. Who's been training with her grandmother? So I trust that I like the whole genealogy. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. She's been she gave birth the family. to all three of her kids at her home. And, mm. um, has been doing it for about forty years before me. So. So when a midwife becomes involved in your pregnancy, how early on do they become involved? As early or as late as you'd like. But so what? Okay. I was just, I mean, I was fit as a fiddle. I didn't. Right, yep. And this wasn't your first child, and you weren't yeah. concerned. And, yep. and then working on the farm, I mean, I didn't, I barely gained weight, and I was just mm -hmm. weeding all the time. Like, it wasn't a necessity. I only went to see her to get um, ultrasound. And but did she know you were coming? Did she know, like, after did I you? contacted her. So when did you, did you contact her just about the two months, or did you, yeah. like, set it up, like, hey, I'm going to be contacting you in a couple months? No, it was. That I contacted her. Okay. Said, hi, uh, are you available to see me? I know you might be busy with other clients, but mm -hmm. I'm going to give birth soon. Um, so what do they do when they come? What's their first? First, like, what's I, the... take, I have appointments at her house every two weeks, depending on the time mm -hmm. of uh, how far along I am. Mm -hmm. um, and so they do a full physical exam yes, and all that stuff? I okay. take a urine uh, test for glucose levels and then um, blood pressure, weight, um, height. Um, she'll measure from the top of the stomach all the way to the bottom. Well, um check. We didn't check blood. Oh, we'll do ultrasound to see where the baby is, to see yep. the sex of the baby. Mm -hmm. um, she's also legally supposed to send me to a hospital or a doctor if there are any complications. Mm. And, uh, Perfect. So, thing was fine. Yeah. And did, does or? No, and that's how we see it. I, if, oh. it it's just, I think it's the organic fruits and vegetables. I'm sure that's some way with it. Yeah. It, 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 it's got to be healthier. So, um, from what I gather, at some point, you guys started doing your own research on vaccinations, and you've chosen, okay. we're, we're not doing the vaccinations uh, route. So, um, because, but you're not, a, would, what, what would, would you to go to the doctor? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, right. yes. If there was a problem, of course. Yeah, okay. I, yeah, well, I don't know. So, oh, well, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I shouldn't have been making it, but... Um, any problems? Any developmental problems? Medical problems? Anything that concerns you? No. Never? No. Health is worse? The worst is probably him picking at his mosquito bites. Like, don't pick at your alleys. He'll never stop doing that, no, ever. No, it's a little scab, but I mean, yeah. that is literally the extent of any type of issue, okay. medically. Or physically, I mean... Um, we do, took them until they were about 16 months before they started walking, and they didn't even walk. They just ran. So how how big? That's a long baby. Yes, right. That's only about 22 inches shorter than we are now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to you, include myself in that. You're a little vert, a little more vertically challenged than I am. It was heavier and shorter. Mm -hmm. oh, that, that, that's my guy. Yeah, and he's stout. You've seen him. He's yeah, stout yeah, he's, he's, yeah. He's not a chubby kid, though. He's he's stocky. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's about 20 ounces to the pound. <laughs> um, weeding. Yeah. Weeding. Yeah, that's right. Get him to work. Yeah. <laughs> he's happy-go-lucky. So, mm -hmm. um, and so, 
By starting so far back in the timeline with their questions, the detectives have successfully allowed Fusari to distance herself enough from the current situation that she has forgotten to be upset. She is talkative, and in this state, she is more likely to reveal things before she thinks about what she is saying. So, is, um... She's probably... I don't, I don't know about any of this. Is John in his height weight category? Yes. They're either too fat or they're not. And that also prompted a CPS visit? Is that? Yes, with the same doctor about the helmet. Okay. Yes. He referred you to CPS how many times? Then? It was once, as far as I'm aware. So. Huh. Yeah. Well, Thanks, a lot. Thanks a lot for the cookie. Yeah, yeah. look what happened now. So that was like. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, we would expect that, right? So, but was it the so was it the same time that the, the helmet? Yes. Okay, so it yes. was kind of like a couple issues on the same referral. Is we that thought right? they were just coming for the helmet, and then she clarified for us and said, she, "This documentation here says that she's fine." So yeah. I don't know what he's telling you. Right. Okay. So that was probably frustrating. Very. So she. Uh, uh, three months ago, she weighed 46 pounds, and about how tall is or was she three months ago? Oh. Um, you know? I don't I forgot. Uh, that's okay. I wouldn't know how to tell my kids that. Right? I use this. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> you, well, let's say if she were standing here, what, what's just your ballpark where you think she'd stand to you? Or she, you, you probably know where she comes to your body. Yeah, with me standing, her head is right right up to here. I mean, she sits. Just like chest level. Yes. And how tall are you? I'm Fusari and Welsh had child services investigating multiple times, but Fusari brushes off each incident as if each one was an overreaction. Maybe she's four. So she's years. actually pretty tall. She is, isn't she? I mean, my father in law is six something. Oh, well, yeah. So where on you? He's not chest level, so right just waist. over the waist? Just or, over the waist. Okay. Just tall enough for great hugs. You betcha. Mm -hmm. So he is at two. That's actually pretty tall. Too. That's actually quite tall, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's going to be a sprouting kid, too, then, isn't he? Um, so now we're going to get into a more difficult subject. And then we're going to get married as, as well, which... Obviously, you're going to want to talk about her, but it'll probably be difficult today. Okay. Was he excited about that? Yeah. Was well, he really? Good for him. Wait, or you were a few minutes early, however we want to word it, right? Sure. <laughs> Depending on who you ask. <laughs> right. Two minutes late, and Seth delivered her. So did Seth know what to do with the court? He did it all. Yeah. Or did he leave a little? So when you gave you bottle feed, breast feed, pump, uh, company. Pump. So when you gave birth, work? Yeah. Okay, where did you work at? At the Cedar Springs Meyer. So when you were working at Cedar Meyer, while you were at work, did you leave work to breastfeed or did you leave pumped bottles at home for Seth to feed? I left pumped bottles at home. Okay. So how do you do that? When you, when you set up your pump, I mean, I know how the pump works, mm -hmm. but is that something you refrigerate, something you freeze, something you do fresh every day? What about, uh, so how does that work? Uh, it depends on my shift, but usually it's, it's, I pump fresh every day, and I will leave one out on the counter, leach them in the fridge, and then there will be some in the freezer. So if he does run out during the day, there's some extra in the freezer on those days where I'm just, pardon my language, but a little more swollen than Yeah, right, usual. yeah. So when you left some, so you would leave one bottle on the counter, mm -hmm. so that could be room temperature, yes. and then you put how many typically in the fridge? About three. Okay, and then how many did you typically have on tap in the freezer? Oh boy. And so those are just um, in the bottle, nipple inverted. And no, how's that they're work? not in the bottle. They're okay. in a, a freezer safe pouch. Oh, like a, and then, oh, and then that gets stuffed down into a bottle. No, the pouch gets put into a a pot. And then you, um, with not boiling water, but warm enough water mm -hmm. so it defrosts. Uh -huh. And then you pour it into a bottle. Oh, I gotcha. And then let it sit so it's not too hot. And so you would keep about 12 of those in the freezer, yeah. guess the amount. Mm -hmm. 
So, how long do the ones in the freezer stay good? Okay. Oh, so you, so do you do you rotate the freezer ones out to the fridge so you can put some fresh ones in the freezer? It depends. Like if we were going to my in laws house in Grand Haven, then I would bring the freezer ones with me. Oh, to get yeah to use some of those. Mm -hmm. Milk and other foods were available, and Mary could have been fed if they had chosen to do so. The food was deliberately withheld. Did, so do you date the ones that are in the freezer? Yeah. Do you put dates on? Oh, you have to. Okay. Breast mm -hmm. formula, or Breast. same story? Farm is taking off well enough, so I was able to stay home and do farmer's markets. Fresh from the source. Most, yeah. most. Did you still leave some in the freezer? I didn't need to. But what about, what if, so Seth did feed. And I, I should note that when I went back to work after already. Oh, she was, okay. So in about so a month, she, she was already, she was going to start solid food. So I would have um, a frozen solid food of like a breast milk mixed with like cream spinach and peas and ice trays. And then you can defrost that. Um, even in the Ziploc bag in the microwave. So was was at four months was she was she uh, developing well was she getting to be a roly poly how did your kids develop um, I, every, every child's different I know that but they all were very um, engaging and active and uh -huh. yes roly poly is a great way to describe all of them actually okay um, the only thing they were laid on was uh, walking okay so would you say like Chubby cheeks and uh, uh, or she always thinner. She's always petite. Always petite. Yeah, she was never nothing chunky about her. Just. You know, but. Like but nothing concerning either. No, no. So she was still fitting into the size diapers and yes, stuff. Yeah, like absolutely. So when, because I, I mean, I've got kids too, but I probably much like Seth. I didn't do mo most of the diaper shopping. Mm -hmm. But I know there's like months. Like yeah. there's the zero, the infant, or the t t newborn. newborn, and then it goes Five like to what? One, two, three. So that's based on months, right? So it'll say like zero to three months or something like that, or does it say three to six months? Is it not like zero that Zero to three months um, is usually size, still newborn. And oh, then still newborn. three okay. to six would be size one. So when she was three to six, was she wearing size one, three to yeah, six? Yeah, she was very, she was good with her diapers. Okay, so although even though she was petite, she was still growing into the appropriate, the age appropriate diapers. Yeah, she was very tall. Okay. And, um, and even her, even her clothes, like her two T's and four T toddler stuff, was she age appropriate with the sizes that she was growing into? Yeah, we in fact had to get larger because she was so long. Oh. Um, but they weren't so baggy that they were falling off from her. No, okay. not until. Um, Good. Actually, not at all. She finally started to fit them fully when she yeah. was maybe a year. Okay. And that's when. But Fusari cannot be telling the truth because as underweight as Mary was near the end of her life, a diaper for that age group would not have stayed around her waist. She was eight pounds, which would have put her in newborn diapers. He turned into a chunker for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And obviously he grew out of that. Um, and so was he still age appropriate, or did he kind of go uh, an age or two over where he should have been? He was a tad over. Okay. Um, not in the diaper sense, um, but uh, I mean, right now he's wearing three T to four T diapers, but oh. that's because they're the pull up ones. So yeah. I'm trying to encourage potty training. Yo, yeah, good. Um, but uh, his clothes right now are uh, three T. Oh, so he is over then, yeah. Yeah, but he's but, he's gonna be three soon, and I just yeah. don't want him when he puts his arms up to have his belly out. So well, I plus, you want to buy him one. She wanted to last more than a week. Yeah. Right at that age, they're just sprouting oh, out. And so, so you didn't work. When did you go back to work? Oh. About ish. February of this past year. Of this year or seventeen. This is 2018? Yes, 2018. So this is... And that's when I started working at McDonald's. Okay. And so... February? Mm -hmm. Sorry. So... 17th, actually. So, um... So, in October. So, from... Uh, so, October 23rd to November 23rd. One to, to December to January to February. So, basically, the first four full months... She was fresh from the source, breastfed as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and same story. If you went somewhere, she went with you. Yes. Seth never had to feed her. No. So and for four months, anyway. we never fed her. No. Okay. No way. Not that he couldn't. I just no. But why? Yeah, why if you're right there. To, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was winter cuddle time. Just... Mm. So February seventeenth, you go back to work. Why did you have to go back to work? Um, just to be blunt, just to support the farm. Yeah. Yep. Um, give us some startup money. Because now you, you guys used to do fruit farm produce stand, and Seth was saying that just didn't really take off. Yeah. So now he's trying to do a you pick strawberry thing. And I would take, I was pregnant with Mary taking Elizabeth and John down to farmer's markets four times a week from six to three. Oh. Yeah, it was grueling. It's exhausting. Yeah. And having to manage the children and then interact with the customers. and Some days were just not, we didn't pay the gas to no. go down there. So. Uh -huh. I don't blame you. You pick strawberries this year took off phenomenally, and we just we're going to expand that way. So now is the farm, whose passion is that? It started out as Seth. I was born in, in Brooklyn, New York, so I didn't... Not your passion, then. Not, your... not then. <laughs> so is it your passion now? Absolutely. Okay, so this is something that, that Seth wanted, and then you grew to love? or yeah. Okay. That's why I work at McDonald's. I wouldn't otherwise. No, right, right. So, so then, so February 17 rolls around, and and this month's old. <laughs> How do you manage feeding them? Refrigerate bottles. Okay. Because I was only doing four-hour shifts at the time, um, just so they can see my work ethic. So I would do, um, I would leave one bottle out and then one bottle in the fridge, and I would the day and then put her down to bed before I left. And that was at seven o'clock. Right, so you your shift was seven to eleven. Seven p.m. to, to eleven. Yeah, yeah. So is on a typical day. What time in the morning would be your first feeding with her? Uh, at that time. At that time. Um, maybe five. A.m. Three three thirty. Three thirty, and okay. then. So at three thirty, she would wake up, mm -hmm. and would she do a full feeding? Yes. Although she would um, fall asleep, so I'd, I'd wake her up. You just keep nudging her. Sure yeah. yeah. And when you now, typically speaking, at three thirty, when you woke her up, would she need a diaper change as well? No. Okay, so she wouldn't, because she was up at midnight before that eating. So, so the last feeding for the night would be mid. Well, well, let's just start at three thirty. That'll give us okay, a, that'll yeah. give us a good time frame. So at three thirty, there'd be a, um, a full feeding, and her diaper was fine. No, no pee, no, no poop. She's good. Yeah, she was fine. So then, when would be the next feeding? Between five and six. And, and that's when I would change her. And would that be another full feeding? Yes. Okay. And I would change her then. And, and then when you changed her then, it would be due to? Urine. Urine. Mm -hmm. And then the kids would be up too. And then so I'd leave just to be awake with the kids. And mm -hmm. the kids would have breakfast while Mary's either eating or sitting in her little bouncy chair looking around. And then... Um, so at four months, she could sit in her bouncy chair and look around? And yes. Okay. She was always able to, to hold her head up on her own. But um, it was a little rocker chair, not a bouncy chair. I'm sorry. So she would lean back in it and put batteries in it and it rocks on Oh, yes. Yeah. So the next feeding, is, uh, we have a five to six time frame. The next feeding is, would have been when, about? Eight to nine. Eight to nine. Yeah, she would feed every two hours on average. Another full, every feeding was a full feeding? Was yes. Full she was, yeah. If Mary was eating as much as Fusari claims and still losing weight, she should have seen a doctor immediately to check for an underlying medical condition, unless they did not want the child to get better. And eight to nine, how is the diaper? Um, depending on the day or um, how much she ate, I would change her poop three times a day. Okay. That I made note of. Okay. So um, it's hard to give you specifics on a, an actual day, but if she didn't poop then, the next time there would be a poop. But it was always one in the afternoon. So either that, either this chain, this feeding, or the next one is typically a poopy diaper. Yes. Okay. And the next feeding was—I know you told me, but I'm not good at the math. Another two hours after that. 
so you're thinking 11 to 11 to noonish because noon. I know she'd eat when the kids would have lunch too. So noonish. And then the kids would have their snack around two, and she'd be eating again. So I can say that either the eight to nine or the noonish feeding was a poopy diaper change. Yeah, and it was not. I mean, she didn't do solids yet. There wasn't solid poopy yet. No. And then you said afternoonish was uh, what did you say? Two uh, two. Around two, the kids would have their snack. Maybe two to three. Um. How about the diaper situation on that one? She just always pee. So every time I got her up to to, um, to feed her during the day, there was always pee. So every every daytime feeding had a had a wet diaper. Yes. Holy smoly. Yeah. Well, she yeah. was eating a lot. Yeah, she was. It was just at three thirty, which I was grateful for that I didn't have to change her diaper at three thirty right. in the morning when I wanted to go back to bed. Right. So then five ish. Five to six, or is this the? Or would there only be one more feeding before you went to work? Or? Yeah, so around five, when the kids would have dinner, okay, because I would put the kids down for bed before I left also. And if she's in the winter, so the it was darker outside, yep. so they would sleep yep. earlier in the day. Um, so I'd feed everyone, and then that's bed for the night, which would be about at six thirty, because then I'd have to get ready for work. 6.30, kids would go to bed, and there'd be a bottle on the counter, and there'd be one in the fridge, just in case. But first, you'd... Yeah. While well, the kids were eating dinner, yeah. Would, you, would, you, would you put her to bed? Would she be asleep when you put her to bed? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you would feed her to sleep, mm -hmm. and then lay in the bed. Okay. Yes. And uh, there wouldn't be anything, not even a, a teddy bear in the bed. Not okay. that early. Okay. Um, so, um... And she would sleep until... Maybe midnight. So Seth wouldn't even sometimes need the bottle. So I would just use the bottle so it wouldn't go to waste when I came home. So if you were already home, then you'd use the bottle. Yes. But if you weren't home, Seth would use the bottle. Mm -hmm. But what would you do with the one in the fridge then? I'd use it the next morning. Okay. I just want to make sense. Yeah, at 3.30 um, when she would get up again. And it was 3.30 clockwork. She you know, I would sleep on the couch because I would just know it should be up at 3.30. So, so let me just go over this sure. um, to see if, if I've got it right. And so actually I'll start with, um, I'll start with midnight. Okay. So typically either right before you got home or about the time you got home there was a feeding. Yes. I think she just knew Mama was home. Now was, there, was it always you or did sometimes Seth feed her prior to you being home? It was always me. Okay. I just I chose to, and he was very kind about it. He said, yeah. "You need your rest." And yeah. Really, Seth didn't even need those bottles that were left behind because he he no, didn't. I remember, no. Okay. And she started eating solid food a month after that, and that's not the stories between Fusari and Welch do not match up. Fusari indicates that the baby was fed by Seth quite often, but he claims that he rarely had to feed her because either Fusari did it herself, or Mary would be fussy and refuse the food. Oh, okay. And then she was eating the solid food, so I, I would um, grind up, um, you know, organic vegetables mixed with breast milk. Yeah. And he would feed that to her along with some oatmeal. Okay. Um, so before we get into that, let me just okay. first make this sure this timeline is all right. Okay. So at midnight, you would marry. At 3.30 uh, in the morning, she would wake you up crying. Mm hmm and you'd get up and you'd feed her again. Her diaper was fine because at midnight you changed her diaper? Yes. Was probably, was that poopy? Or Most likely it was okay. poop because yeah. she was sleeping for four hours before that. Yep. So then at 3.30, full feeding, diaper's fine. Mm -hmm. 5 a.m., full feeding, probably a wet diaper. Yes. Yeah. 8 to 9, full feeding, maybe a poopy diaper. Noonish, full feeding. If the other diaper wasn't poopy, this one was. Yes. Um, 2 to 3, Full feeding, wet diaper, mm -hmm. six thirty, just prior to you going to work, you'd feed her lay her in bed and then you're off to work. Mm -hmm. And then you'd be home by midnight, we'd start the thing over again. Yeah. Okay. So now you said those habits changed at some point. At about six months. At six months. Mm -hmm. 
So at six months, did your hours change? Is that yeah. why these habits changed, or did they change because or a combination of both? Um, I, it could have been a, a combination of both. I know because she was growing and she was eating more, and we were encouraging the solid food so she could gain more weight. Um, so when she was growing, so now at six months, was she wearing 6T? Was she wearing age-appropriate size diapers? Lengthwise, yes. Length? But she wasn't filling them out with wise. So she was wearing her three to six month clothing. And how would, how do you feel about weight size? Was she okay or was she... I was a tad concerned, but then I remembered... Um, I'm a mom, so I'll just worry about anything. Sure. <laughs> but yeah. then I remembered Elizabeth and how petite she was then and how she would fill in lengthwise but not widthwise until she was about a year. So what but what was your tab concern? What was that? Was she just not gaining enough weight or was that the concern? It was possibly, it was just, um, I think what got to me was seeing like other babies just so chunky and, and always hearing like, oh, she's so small. And I was like, yes, she's, she's premature, she's petite. Mm -hmm. Leave it alone. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then, also, I forget, like, all these babies are formula fed, and there's nothing against formula. Sometimes you no. just need to do it, mm -hmm. but the formula is what chunks up the baby sure, quickly, sure. and I just didn't do that. Um, so then I got it out of my head. It was just a little So it, you had a little bit of a concern due to her weight, but not her length, but you weren't overly concerned. You got it out of your head because you realized that she's fine. And yeah, was, I, was, I was being a little bit, I suppose. Well, we all can do that. As with adults, babies can vary in body shape. Although at that age, the difference is slight. As emaciated as Mary was would be cause for alarm for any parent who cared about the well-being of their child. So at six months, other than a little bit underweight, you considered her to be appropriate size. Yes, and okay. developmentally as well. I mean, she was, and she was doing real well developmentally. And... Yeah, she was already putting her hands on the floor and, and just looking around. We mm -hmm. have a play mat, and we call it, we give her tummy time. Mm -hmm. um, so especially on days where I have off, we'll just be playing all day, tummy time. And she'll be on the, her stomach, and she'll have her head up, looking around, watching the other kids play, or have table time, just ready to do their schoolwork. Um, the cats would cuddle with her, which is adorable. Um, mm -hmm. She'd roll over on her back, and there's like a little um, balcony, not balcony, um, Called, looks like a rainbow, but it's over the head of the baby, and she can. Oh, I have no finger to dangle with. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, she yeah. reaches her yeah. arms up, and she'll grab at them and pull them down. And the this is another difference between Fusari's statement and Welch's. He said that Mary would often sleep and was a fairly quiet child, but Fusari describes her as active. In reality, Mary would not have the strength or energy to pull herself up. I giggle at the sound. Mm, like she's okay. interactive. Okay. So you felt that she was developing good at that point? Yes. And you're educated in this area, so I am. if there's anyone that should know, it would be you. I mean, I probably so. better than us two. Uh, I'd like to think so. Paid for all that education, it should help, right? So, because you're educated in early childhood development, is that what you said? Yes. So, and where's that education through? Uh, it started out at City College of New York. Okay. And my credits transferred to Grand Rapids Community College. Okay, so then, all right, so now now we're into the six month, and your hours change to what? 3 o'clock in the afternoon to 11 o'clock in the evening. And so I know this is boring, but let's go over the new day schedule now because of the change of hours and the change. At six months, have you done a diet change? She fruit, mashed up fruit, vegetables mixed with breast milk, so the vegetables include um Whatever we were growing, which were peas, spinach, um, we got organic carrots from the store. Um, that, tend, that was a little fibrous, so I mixed it in with some peas. Um, mm. The fruits were blueberries, strawberries, apples, um, raspberries. She liked the raspberries. So when you mix it in with breast milk, explain, what is what do you mean by that? Oh, so I would, um, I would pump. I would pump some milk in a bottle, and then I would, we have a juicer or a blender, uh -huh. so I would um, blend the vegetables, so for example, the spinach. Okay. I blend the spinach in there with a little water, and then I pour the breast milk in there to show it was um, easy for her to swallow, like oatmeal. So then she eat it with a spoon or out of a bottle? A spoon. Okay. It was solid enough for her, um, I just set her eye to feed her with a spoon. So now, at six months old, was she using a bottle at all anymore? No, she didn't need to. She was, was still she, nursing. She was still nursing? Yes. Okay. 
So then let's do this then. Let's talk about, um, let's, let's go over like the daily routine of that, of okay. nursing and feeding. So sure. if we would say that the day starts at midnight. Okay. Or no, that's, how? She was sleeping through the night at this point. She was. Yeah. Okay. So you, what in the morning time, what would be your first feeding? Uh, between 7 and 8. Because the kids would wake up at that time as well, and I think they woke her up. So between seven and eight, she would awake, and you would feed. You would. I would nurse her then. Nurse. So I'd give the kids their breakfast, and then I'd sit down. And probably a little bit longer now, maybe. Yes. Not. Oh yeah. Okay. She would. She would sit there and chug, and they would take both both breasts to, okay. to fill her up. What and at that feeding was it just breast milk? Mm -hmm. In the morning, yeah. And how about diaper? Um, in the morning, oh yes, because she yeah. slept all night. It was typically a poop. Okay. But um, if not, it'd be a pee, of course. But it was most likely a poop. And then when was the next feeding after the 7 o'clock one? She still would eat every two to three hours. She did, okay. But the next feeding after that, so let's say if it was 7 to 8, the first one will do 11. Okay. And that's when it was solid food. So I'd start with the nursing, and then I'd give her solid food after that. Sol the, 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 the solid smoothie you just explained. Yeah. Okay. And it would be vegetable first. And then we'd give her fruit because if she had the fruit first, she would not eat the vegetables. So the veggies were mixed with breast milk, mm -hmm. and the fruit wasn't. And, and the fruit was not. The no. fruit was just the smoothie. Yeah. Okay. Why did you mix the veggies with the breast milk? What was the purpose? I don't. I'm oh, just curious. The veggie gets a little gritty. Oh. Okay. So with the breast milk, it helps it go down easier. Not so chunky. And how much of that would she typically eat? About four to six ounces. Of then, each one or combined? Of each one. And that was even after about a half hour or 40 minutes of nursing. If Mary was being fed that quantity of food as frequently as Fusari said, then she would have been several pounds heavier. Oh, so you would nurse her at 11 too? Yes. I nursed oh. her every chance I got, getting solid foods and, you know, WebMD recommended. And just, like, just, you know. So then at 11, actually, the first thing you do is nurse her. Yeah. Then you'd feed her the veggie smoothie with breast milk. Mm -hmm. Then you'd feed her the fruit smoothie with just a little bit of water blended with it, or just fruit? It depends on the fruit. If okay. it was apple, I'd have to do water with it. <laughs> strawberry, you couldn't eat it. Okay. Um, if I had a strawberry and apple, I didn't eat it. It just depended. And, and, the, and the vegetables was four to six ounces, and the fruit was four to six ounces. Mm -hmm. And um, so then after that, what, was the, what would be the next feeding? Another two or three hours after that. Okay, so it was, it was one, whenever she asked for it, really. Okay. So like sometimes it would be because we'd be outside, so um, we'd be like, weeding or just playing outside. Did she come out with you when you were outside? Uh, yes. Okay. She loved what it. What did she do? She sat in her stroller. Okay. All she right. liked to laugh at the birds and yeah. just, um, and then she'll start to ah ah. That's when you they like, hungry. hungry, huh? So, but you would have to say that, I, and I know that obviously that none of us eat lunch exact same time every day. But so, one to two p.m. Mm -hmm. you're feeding her again. Yeah. And that consisted of the same thing. Nursing for a half hour. Uh yes, it yeah nursing first, and it, sometimes I wouldn't do it that long just because um, we we have work to do outside. Yeah. So I nurse for a little bit just to. Um, a piece her so she'd stop crying. Yeah. And then I'd sit her in her high chair and feed her um her food. So on the one to two you might have cut back to nursing a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And she'd have um the same amount of salad, but that would be enough for her. Yep, four to six of each then and that as well. Yes, and then I'd put her down for a nap. Yeah. And so let me back up at the um eleven o'clock feeding. Well at the seven to eight I'm sorry, at the 11 o'clock feeding, was there a diaper change? Yeah. And was that, because um, I know the 7 o'clock one, we had a, usually yeah. a poopy diaper. No, it was just urine. Okay. She would poop again after her nap. So the the one to, oh, after the nap. So the one to two, was a diaper change? Yeah. Just urine? Yeah. Okay. And then after that feeding. So nap was about when to when? Because she hasn't napped for the day, it'd probably be about three or four hours. So maybe let's just say whatever two to five, two to six. Actually, yeah, because then she'd get up and it'd be dinner time for her and the kids and for mom and dad. So she was good on. Uh, <laughs> so was she usually up by five, six o'clock, yeah. somewhere? Okay. Time for dinner. And then when she woke up, she wake up hungry right away. Yeah, I mean I, I assumed because she would latch on quickly. And <laughs> yeah. 
So when she woke up, you would be feeding her five, six o'clock. After I changed her poop. All right, change poopy diaper. Right, now at this point, are you, are you getting a little more solid poopy diapers? Is it still running? Poopy yeah, diaper? there's more solid because she's right. been eating the chunkier food. All right. And so, and so based in your opinion of what you're seeing in her diaper, she's digesting her food just fine. Yeah. Right, everything. If it was still runny, I'd be concerned. If there's yeah. no poop at all, I'd be concerned. Yeah. Okay. But um, the color comes out fine. I mean, it's it's brown. Okay. More solid, good color. So, um, woke up hungry. So that's a nursing. Yes. Is that a full, or do we, we cut that one back a little too, or? Um, for dinner. For it, dinner. Yeah, I would um cut it back a little too because I also have to get dinner ready for everyone else. So I nurse just a little bit, tell the kids to clear the table, um, help dad set the table, and then nurse her while they were doing that, and then we'd have dinner. So that nursing would be a how long ish? Maybe, maybe like twenty minutes, just enough to appease her. Yeah. And then she'd have um maybe an ounce more okay. of the solid food. So five to seven. Mm-hmm. Roughly, sure. Just because I didn't nurse her as much, that would have. And is that on both again? So five to seven vegetables, five to seven fruit. Yes. Mm-hmm. I gave her some variety. All right, and so that. Is the six, the, the the five to six time frame. Mm-hmm. So where do we go from there? Then uh, after everyone's eaten, the kids clear the table and they either like help dad with dishes or clear the counter or put the food away in the container. Meanwhile, um, Rocker just watching everyone. Or is, we have a, a striped kitty. He was, we have three kittens and they were born the nineteenth of October. And mm. then there's one the twenty third. So. So. Yeah. Yeah. So the striped one likes to cuddle with Mary in her rocker chair. The detectives allow Fusari to keep describing Mary's activities, knowing full well that nothing she is saying matches the forensics. Oh, so she gets right up the neck. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, he looks cute. We have pictures. Yeah. Um, and he would just sit there right on her, by her feet, and just rock with her and fall asleep. And she wouldn't usually fall asleep. There's just so much going on with the kids. So yeah. she would just watch and just make little noises. And so... Obviously, the same with all of us uh, with the pictures and stuff. Um, so, like, you have pictures of Mary, like, in her rocker, mm-hmm. sitting upright, all yeah. that kind of stuff. And um, are those on your phone, on a camera, on a Google Drive? They're on my phone. On your phone, okay. We didn't grab that, though, right? You, you no. didn't take that? Okay. I wasn't even sure where it was. I'm, okay. I'm not on it very much. It's just like yeah. it down. Use it as a camera, right? Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> so... Sits on the rocker. Everyone else is cleaning up the, you know, doing doing our normal nightly routines. So then, what's next? So then, um, getting exhausted. Mm-hmm. Um, she said she usually has adventurous days. Yeah. So uh, I maybe around seven ish, seven to eight. Always depends, obviously. So if I'm giving you a broad hour, yep. Yep. I put her down for bed. So I nurse her maybe ten minutes just to. Put her to sleep. Mm-hmm. But if I put her straight to bed without nurturing, she'll get a little fussy. Mm-hmm. So I just put her to I nurse her, burp her, and then check just to make sure she needs to be changed. She's dry. Place her down. And then I close the door, and then the kids will have their bath and put their PJs on, and then they go to bed. So a nurse, burp her, check her diaper. So now that that feeding, no solid foods. No. That okay. was, um. So that's just a quick 10 minute nursing. Off and that was like an hour after dinner. She yep. didn't so much. Yep. Just Okay. So then that takes us again then back to um, 7 a.m. Yeah. And we start the day over. Yep. She was asleep all night. So that was quite a blessing for me. And has that routine ever changed, or has that the routine that you were still on? That routine remained consistent until she started going through her growth spurt, which has been recently where she... um, Actually, now that I think about it, a few weeks after that, she was going through her six-month growth spurt. Okay. And she would sleep so much, and my... So when you say it's growth spurt, oh, did she get much longer? Yes, did she much fuller. So and she got chubbier? Her cheeks did. Okay. And she was filling into her clothes better. I mean, I was excited to put her in the new <laughs> So when you say her cheeks got chubbier, would you then describe her cheeks if you were to look at her as baby and say, 
Ah, she got chubby cheeks, or just chubbier than they once were. Chubbier than they once were. Okay. And she got longer. Yeah. And so she was born at 20 inches. Mm -hmm. What did you, I don't know if you measure or not, but what would be your ballpark is what she sprouted out to? Maybe another two inches. Okay. So was that the first time she grew? No, there was a three-month period, but that was just... She was an infant, she was sleeping a lot anyway, so okay. it wasn't very noticeable, but I, because she was barely sleeping through the day at this point and sleeping through the night, mm -hmm. we noticed that she was sleeping a lot longer during the day, waking up later, mm -hmm. and she'd take longer, so just, great. Yeah. And then so, that phase ended. So, when you, with your, with your, do, you, do, you, do you weigh and measure your kids on a regular basis? Uh, no. Um, okay. When she'd come and do checkups for the kids. Um, when was and so then after the three month checkup, do you guys have a routine that you do to check up on the kids, or just as needed if they're sick, if they're not sick? Do you it's know? as needed. Okay. I do have um. Although uh, I did have a weight blanket, and it was um, I had a little scale, and there were like grommets on the end of the blanket that you hook onto the scale. So I mm -hmm. hook, but um. What's the most you ever had her weighing that you can recall? 12 pounds, 14, 14 pounds, but Four. it, was, it was a while ago because the cat got to it. Okay, so at, at, she weighed 14 pounds at about what age? Six months. Six months, okay. And that was during, before, or after before this growth? Before the growth started. Oh, so. Even family members tried to tell Fusari and Welch that there wasn't something right about Mary's weight but the couple refused to listen. 14 pounds before the growth spurt, so you would, what, as a mom, what would you guess her weight that she would have gained? After the growth spurt? Yeah. Maybe another three, three, four pounds. So Maybe seven. Maybe not even. I'm just, let's go with two. Two? And, and again, I'm just asking to guess things that you don't know. I'm, yeah. Not really here nor there, but I'm just wanting to know just the kind of ballpark is of what you think at least from, mm -hmm. So you would guess her to weigh 16 pounds at, at the conclusion of her growth spurt? Yeah, she definitely felt like it. Okay. And um, so you say she started sleeping more just after this routine started. Yeah. And, and that was only for about a week. And then she, I suppose, ended her growth spurt and then went back to her regular routine. She slept more for one week. Mm -hmm. And when you say she slept more for one week, what do you mean by that? She slept from one to one. Uh, for example, if I put her down at seven, she wouldn't get up until ten. <laughs> and her naps would be instead of two hours, four. She she's had a six hour nap before during this growth spurt. Mary was sleeping for long periods because she was malnourished and her body was struggling to conserve energy. And I would always just check. But How would you check her? The door I don't close all the way. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a hole in the door that I put there because um, I'm not very savvy with tools and I hit the door with a hammer. Mm. So there's a big hammer hole there. So I use it as a people. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Um, I also don't close the door fully just because the humidity slows the doors oh, um, yeah. and I don't want it to lock shut. Yeah. So um, it's closed but not completely. So I'll push it a little and every time I push it she won't wake up but she'll jerk. Mm -hmm. So she move in, mm -hmm. and then I'll peek at her, and I'll see her move in. Yeah, she like a little bit of a flinch. Yeah. And then she also has a little music player that shown like blue light, so I could see her face, and I could see her breathing. And so, did you do that by your kids? Okay. Yeah. Were, were all your kids in the same bedroom? Probably? When they were infants, yeah. Okay, did they all sleep in the same crib? Yeah. Okay. And so did that crib ever get removed out of that bedroom, or is that crib always there? No, it was removed because... um. He was an infant in that room with that crib, and they removed it to put his um, yeah. big boy bed. In yeah. the so for one, at about her six six month mark, which would have been February, April, so mm -hmm. in April ish, she had one week of sleeping a lot. Yeah. Okay. But then after that one week, she went back to the basic schedule that we just discussed. Yeah. And did her schedule ever change again? Not until recently, in which I thought she was going through her nine-month growth spurt. Right. She was sleeping a lot lately. So recently, her her um, her um, schedule changed again, and 
When you say recently, about when ish was that? Three days ago. All oh, three days ago. Okay. So three days ago, what what happened then? We went. Um, so three today is th Thursday. So uh, Tuesday was it Monday? Tuesday? What, Tuesday? You remember what day that you were specifically remember it changing, or is it, you don't have a specific recollection of it? I don't. I don't. But I know I didn't have work. We can say Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday. Tuesday sounds fine. Um, yeah, so tell me what you noticed. She got up at, at nine o'clock. You were so tired, weren't you? And she went to bed when? Uh, the night before that. Seven o'clock. Okay. So she got up at zero nine after going to bed at seven. Mm -hmm. And it just reminded me of when she was six months old. It was she was consistent. Then she would eat like crazy, and then she would doze off again, like she was ready for bed immediately after eating. So I, so I just, okay, this is consistent with the other children and with her six-month-old approach her. So I put her down, and she'd sleep for about three hours, get up again, eat, and it seemed like she wanted to go to bed, but I, I kept her up, and she hung out and was interactive, smiling. Um... But then she'd start to fuss because she wanted to go back to bed. She was very tired. And she only likes to sleep in her bed. She or she'll sleep in the car or mm -hmm. the truck. But. So so um, three days ago, did things happen enough that we could establish the routine? Was she on a three-day routine? Could, like We just established two different routines that she was on. Mm -hmm. Did she have a routine the last three days? Or no, it was very, it was a bit erratic. Mm -hmm. She was. I would try and keep her up just because I was worried that she was sleeping so much. Mm -hmm. But um, when she wanted to sleep, she wanted to sleep. Was she eating? Yes, very well. And uh, I mean, the Sunday before last, we went to Golden Corral and she just feasted. She really liked the marshmallow sweet potatoes. <clears throat> so you thought this was a girl spurt. Is that because you noticed her growing again? Yes, and I remembered with my other two children in this. Fusari is trying to make them believe Mary's weight was normal until fairly recently. But according to witnesses, this was not the case. So at six months, we were... Yeah. And so at this, at this nine-month growth spurt, what, how, how much were you guessing her at then? Maybe 20. Okay. And when was the last time that you thought she was 20 pounds? Yesterday. Yesterday, okay. And yesterday, when you thought she was 20 pounds, how long would you have guessed her to be? I mean, her legs would wrap around my waist. She's quite long. Because um, she was born at 20 inches, right? Mm hmm So her head here, and she would just wrap around the side there, so uh, 26 inches maybe. Okay. Quite, quite long. So these last three days that she was going through a growing spurt, you were off from work Tuesday, that's the first day that you noticed that? Yes. And then I went to work once yesterday and I worked. And she does have a different schedule when I go to work, if you need to make note of that. Yes, what's, what's that? So in the morning, she gets up at 7, along with the other children. Breakfast for her and for everyone. And that would be nursing and, and nursing for about a half hour while the kids ate. And then oatmeal. Oatmeal with maybe some maple syrup in it or oatmeal with strawberries in it. Um, just depends. Spoon oatmeal, oatmeal or oatmeal mixed in a bottle? Spoon. Okay. Nice and chunky for her. Okay. Um, and then I'd keep her up. And she would be awake until I had to go to work. So she'd be awake. Then it was time to go outside and help Daddy with the fields. And we'd do weeding. Or I'd sit Mary in her stroller, and she'd just sit and watch the ducks and just, just laugh at them. So you didn't work, you didn't work to, was it 7? I didn't work. I'm sorry, what? You start your day again. Was it, was it 7 o'clock that you started your day? In the morning, yeah. Um, no, I'm sorry. Your work day, on your days of work, what time did you start? 3 o'clock in the morning. 3 p.m. So you'd keep her awake from 7 till 3? To 2.30. Till 2.30. Yeah. So and so during that time that she was kept awake, how many other meals did she have? About four, possibly. Yeah. 
So one she, of them had was a just one. nursing. Well, the 7 o'clock one was breakfast. It was nursing for 30 minutes, oatmeal, some maple syrup, or fruit, whatever you had mm -hmm. around. So when would the next meal then be on, on, on this different routine day? Oh, probably about when well, the kids want, would usually want a snack around 9. So it would be then. She eats maybe 9, 30, 10. And that's, um, that would be be quiet time for the kids. So the kids would go in their room and have, they could read, they could sit in their bed quietly. Mm -hmm. um, and, then for, and that's mom for an entire hour. Okay. And then if the kids were getting too restless, then, oh, time to go back outside. Um, or they'd have to clean their room. It just depends. Yeah. But um, for yesterday, um, the kids, we went back outside. It was just so nice out. Um, she likes to, it keeps her quiet if you go for walks in the stroller. So we just went up and down the driveway, we checked the mail, we picked up garbage. Um, the wind will blow garbage from other places sometimes. Um, Help Daddy with the weeding. We cut some weeds for the goat, and uh, and then I mean that's another couple hours, and then it'd be about maybe two fifteen, or no, I'm sorry, it'd be about one thirty. So the last time she would have ate would have been one thirty yesterday in the afternoon. No, um, I feed her again at one thirty, and then. Busari is told the first lie, which leaves no room for the possibility that she is mistaken. The autopsy revealed that Mary had not been fed in the last several days. Um, what was that feeding? Nursing and some oatmeal. How long was that nursing? The nursing was about 20 minutes. The oatmeal so took longer because she was about 8 ounces of oatmeal. Um, and then I would, uh, I think the kids were still outside. I just um, oh yeah, um, and, um, resting my feet before work, I'm just standing for eight hours. That was at 1.30? Yeah, so then, um, 2.30 was when Mary was finished eating. 2.30 was, yep, was the end of it, and that's when I would change her diaper again. And put her, and put her down. Mm -hmm. Poopy diaper. Yesterday morning, when I got her up for the day. Have you noticed a decline in poopy diapers? No. No, not at all. Joy, she's such a surprise to me. I mean, this morning. When I got her up, she had spit up, and I just... So yesterday morning, when you got her up at 7, she had spit up? No, this morning. Oh, this morning. At 9, when I got her up, when I tried to get her up. Yeah. I thought maybe she she choked on, on her spit, and that's why she spit What color was her spit up? Um, it was foamy and and brown. Okay. So I thought maybe it was the, the oatmeal and the fruit mixed in there. So where was the spit up at? Um, the side of her mouth, um, um, the side of her face. And was that, did you think, and I don't know, was it food? Was it blood? No, it wasn't It was not blood. No, it was, she didn't have any kind of vomiting of blood or anything like that? No, never. Okay. We were taken to a doctor if well, sure. that yeah. ever happened. So you were, you were certain it was food? Yes. Yeah, and it was on her side, it was on what side of her face? Her right side. Her right side, okay. And then that's when you noticed that she was unresponsive. It was yeah. this morning when you saw that. And what what happened next? Um I uh I um she excuse me. Um her eyes were open. Did anything what else look strange other than obviously just stood up and that her eyes were open? Or did, other than that did she look as usual. It's just cold. Okay. So I went in to the to the, just to um, get Seth. And I told him, it's an it's an emergency and he's like and I was just so shocked and he reminded me I knew CPR and he told me to start. So I took her from the bed and I put her on our changing table and um I I started CPR and I did the 
the two finger touch on the chest. Because if you use your whole hand, you could break ribs, and I didn't want to do that that's for sure. I know this is tough. So I did a two finger touch on the chest and her back, and I um, wiped her mouth, and I did. Um, so you did this on her table, on the kitchen table? No, the changing table. On the changing table in the bedroom. Yes. So you said you did it on her mouth and then you wiped her mouth. I wiped her mouth first because it was the, the, the spit up. And now that I think about it, I think it was banana and oatmeal. You know when banana's been sitting out and it's very ripe? Oh, yeah. It gets that like brownish color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but ripe banana's very sweet and she eats the oatmeal better with it. So what did you wipe her mouth with? A baby wipe. A okay. lavender scented baby wipe. Okay. And then you did what with that? I threw it in the garbage. Okay. Well, not immediately. No, I just no. wiped her and put it to the side. Just wiped her into it now. Yeah. Right next on the TV table. And then you picked her up out of the bed? Uh, yes. And then I put her on the changing table. And then um, when I was pumping her chest, there was like bubbles, like mm -hmm. bubbles coming out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I thought maybe that, that's why I thought she choked. And then maybe if I kept pumping, like it would, like maybe it would come out. And then she'd like cough and wake up. So I just kept wiping the bubbles and I was giving her air and giving her, um, pumping with my finger, just my two fingers. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should have done more. Nope, you were doing it right. And she was still so cold. And I think maybe 10, 10 minutes. I don't, it's so hard to gauge time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, it's not just me the whole time. And he's just, he's just asking me, is she, is she dead? Is she gone? While he's crying, he's just asking me, is she gone? And I just so hard to say yes. And I just, I just, I just said yes. Yeah. She's just unresponsive. And then we had no idea what to do then at all. Like, who do, what do we, who do we do? Mm -hmm. And so he called his parents. Or he called his dad first, excuse me. And Rather than immediately calling 911, Fusari and Welch called his parents. His dad said, okay, your mom and I are on our way. Um call the police, let them know what happened, and um, we'll, tr we'll try and get there before they do. And then we just spent the entire time on the couch waiting and crying. We did sleep. It was just my mother-in-law doesn't like three hours. Mm -hmm. We just slept on the floor for her. But I, I don't know why. Wow. Who cares? Why would we sleep on the So... <laughs> So this morning you found her about nine o'clock, and did you? Is that the time you woke up? No, no, I woke up at around seven. The kids are very consistent with their wake up time at seven. Mm -hmm. And and she's always up at seven. Uh yes, except when she's going through a growth spurt, she'll sleep in to about nine or ten. Okay. Which is why I went to check in on her at nine, and I wondered why she wasn't up yet. Okay. But last night when I came home, I I opened the door just a tad so we could make that noise. And it's her. So you finished feeding her at 2.30. Yep. And you put her to bed at 2.30. And that was the last time you saw her because you went to work then. Yeah. Okay. But then you came home at 11.30. And when you opened the door, you saw movement from her. Mm -hmm. You're certain you saw movement Absolutely. from her. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Or else I would have said. Uh -huh. So, did you go any further into that room other than just looking through the door? No. The crack in the door? I did not. Was it the hole in the door or the crack in the door that you looked at? It was a hole in the door. I didn't open the door completely. I just pushed it enough so it would make the noise. It's a very old creaky door. So I pushed it enough. It makes the noise. It doesn't open the door completely. And she nudges because she hears it. And I just peek at her. I see her moving. She's what did, when you say that you saw her moving, well, how did you see her move? Can you describe that? She was laying on her back still. Um, her blanket wasn't kicked off, and I only wrapped it right around the knees down to her feet to keep her feet warm. Um, and she had her polar bear, but she likes to play with her polar bear before she goes to bed, so she kicked it off to the side. Um, she was laying on her back. Her head was turned to the left side a bit. So when I um, pushed the door open, she jerked her arm a little and turned her head. So I could see that her eyes were so closed. She was squinting a bit, and then it's okay. And that's what that's what she does. 
And what time would that have been? Around 11.30, 11.45, like, we'll just say 11.30. Mary had already been dead for some time, and it is doubtful that Fusari checked on her. She knows that telling the detectives how many hours had passed since she truly checked on Mary would not make her look good, and she is hoping to pass herself off as a caring mother. I came home, I was still in my uniform. I came home and I um, brought lemonade home and a burger, and I set it down at the table and I looked inside and I did that. And I, she was fine. And then, and then I went into the room with Seth. So, when, but, but she went to bed at three. Wouldn't it be odd? Wouldn't Wouldn't it be odd, like for Seth, that she's still in bed when he went to bed? Cause she's in bed at. I mean, she went to she went to sleep at two thirty. She's done this before, and so have our other kids. Which is why we thought if she's sleeping, we're gonna let her sleep. Well, yeah, I mean, I get that, but you you saw her, and we saw her, and she's tiny. Tatiana, we're all parents in this room, okay? And we, and we all need to be honest. You remember in, in the car when I first talked with you and I told you that at the end of the day, we all need to know exactly right, okay? So we need to tell her story, okay? And I want you to think about this for a minute. I want you to think for a second and put yourself in our shoes. You're the police officer. You're the police detective. You get called out to that home today. You get called to my home or his home today. Okay? You, the police officer. And then you have to go into that house and you have to look at that that precious little angel. Okay? Do you think she was healthy, honestly? When you look at her size and you can see every single bone in her body, do you think she was healthy? We know this is an easy, Tatiana, but we need to know what happened to her. What was going on? Well, when did she start losing all that weight? Two days. But she, she, she's lost so much weight that you can't lose that much in two days. Fusari's silence when asked if she believed that Mary was healthy is telling. It is obvious that she knew that the child was dying. She tries to tell them that Mary lost weight in the last few days, but they point out that it would have been impossible to lose that much that quickly. She, I've never seen a child that skinny. Never. And here's the thing. You're obviously a very concerned mom, but at what point, at what point did you know, what what, what point did you think something was wrong? Because I know that you knew something, or you thought something wrong. You are an intelligent, educated woman. And at some point, you felt something was wrong. Maybe it was just delusional hope that she was getting bigger and that our cheeks were getting fuller and she was just so happy and playful. In his interview, Welsh also insists that he thought Mary was starting to gain weight. And then she passed a couple days. So when, at what point did she, she, she can't even weigh eight pounds right now. She doesn't weigh eight pounds. When's the last time that you actually inspected her, that you looked at her? Tell me the truth. Every time when I changed her, and I think I just may have been just, just so blinded. And I just, what were you she, blinded by? Because I know, you listen, you are an intelligent, articulate, college-educated, early childhood development. You know. You know when you look at someone that something's wrong. I have a picture of her right here. I'm prepared to show you that tells you no medical treatment, as dumb as I am. I'm not near as intelligent as you. I can't speak the words you can speak. I am not you. And even I can look at this photo and I can say, whoa, something's wrong. It put tears in our eyes when we walked in there. It was that obvious. Tatiana, I'm going to be quite honest with you right now, okay? One parent to another, right? And I'm going to try and control my emotions, all right? I've been to a child death investigator school, and I've seen photos and images of children that have been malnourished, 
And I'm telling you right now, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh, no, really? Yes. Oh. You, you clearly need help, too, though. You're going okay. to be dealing with this. This is baggage. This is something that... But all I want to know is what stopped you from seeking help? You knew something was wrong. What stopped you? Tell us the truth. I mean, are you guys that financially strapped? I mean, what is it? Do you not believe in health care? Do you, I mean, do you have religious beliefs? I mean, what is it? We do have religious beliefs, and I, we just, we were praying about it, and, and we have faith in it. But... When did you start praying about it? I mean, when she was born, but consistently and, and heavily the past three, three, four days. So three, four days ago... You started praying. What were your prayers? Please help her gain weight. Please. She's, she's eating wise and it's sticking. Like, I, why? Like, I. She ate so much. Like. But so why? Why? why it stick? Not unusual for a case like this. Fusari and Welsh only seem to have religious beliefs when it gets them out of things they don't wish to do, such as vaccinate their children or have them receive health care. I have a strong faith as well, a very strong faith, and I think God answers prayers. I'm with you on that. I also think God puts people in places to help people, but we all have our own beliefs. But here's what I'm saying is that you you guys knew enough was wrong to start heavily and consistently praying. Why didn't we seek help? You knew. I just can't. No, no, no. Say you, anything to Seth. I Seth had to know. He doesn't ever hold her? Yes, but he was also very um, faithful and, and trusting God and, and trusted that, that it would be okay. And didn't think we needed to bring her to a doctor. You knew. How, how long did you know this? What the condition? It doesn't happen in three days. It doesn't happen in four days. I think I, I just deluded myself. So when did you dilute yourself? When did you start? When did this condition start? I think within a month it started to become a little bit up and down. Her cheeks would be full and and bright, and and then a couple of days later she would she would look ill or hungry, and then we're not hungry, just just her cheeks wouldn't be as full as they were. Sunken then. Yeah, and then. So when did you notice that she had other bones showing? About a month. About well, a month ago. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you bathed her? Oh, um, maybe two weeks ago. So about a month ago, you you notice that her bones are all showing, right? And so is that when you started happily praying? No, it was, it was the past few days because uh, about a month ago it would be like full and then, you know, two days later it would be sunken in. But then within the day it would be full again. But then the past few days, it wouldn't fill up as quickly as, as it used as it did. But listen, here's what I'm saying, Mary. Listen, I get that, but her legs were as small as my pointer finger. So you that that didn't happen in three days. No. And I know that you know that, and I know that you wanted to get her help, but I'm trying to just figure out. When did this happen? I understand that maybe you started seeing some kind of symptoms a month ago, but when when did she consistently lose all of this weight? When did she consistently become skin and bones? I think it was within the month. Cause so, she, she was always just so, so thin. And... Fusari has walked back her earlier statement and says that Mary's condition had deteriorated over the last month rather than the last three days. This begs the question of why she didn't realize that Mary needed to go to the hospital. So within a month, so then why, when we had a month to look at her like this, why, why didn't we get help? Because we thought, we thought she'd get better without getting help. How would you think she was going to get better? By feeding her and, and, and being with her. Was she really truly eating the way that you were telling us? Yes. I, I, Be, because... I you know, if if you want, he has a photo of her, and if you want to see it, I mean, she, I'm pretty sure that I explained this to both you and Seth when you were in my car with me. Um, you know, she's 
there's going to be an autopsy done, okay? And there was a medical, uh, a person from the medical examiner's office at the house, okay? So we're going to know all this sort of thing. Yeah. But, and, and you're not, you're not a bad person. We get all this, and we get that there's, there's a dynamic here that we're trying to figure out. There is a dynamic here, and I'm going to tell you, I, I know it. I can, I know there's a dynamic. And I feel that you wanted to get her help. I'm trying to just figure out why you didn't. What's the dynamic? What am I missing? Because you can't tell me that this Brooklyn, New York, this New York College, City College, Educated Grand Rapids Community College, Early Childhood person didn't know that this girl needed help, but something stopped her. I just am trying to figure out what it is. What stood between you and help? I think I was worried about another GPS call from the doctors, and I thought that um, Mary would get better and it would be okay. But at what point did you get better? About two days ago. Not three days. Two days ago. So two, three days ago, you thought she wasn't going to get better, so then why didn't we call then? What? Because I thought that I was being doubtful, and I... I, I you thought you thought you were being doubtful of Christ. Yes, I, I thought I was uh, lessening in my faith, and I just. If that. Fusari will not even look at the detective, a sign that she is lying, and using this as an excuse for her actions. What Seth thought you? That I was being doubtful. No, I want to know out of you two, which one, which which one of you wanted to go to take her to the doctor? I know he didn't, and I, I didn't for a long time, and until recently, it just became a little thought in my head that maybe we should, and then I was worried about CPS and about about just losing faith. You can almost see in Fusari's eyes the moment when she chooses to start throwing Welch under the bus by saying that she is the one who wanted Mary to see a doctor, but he prevented her from going. We've had issues with CPS before, and I just didn't want to lose the kids. So you, you, thought, you, thought you, lo you thought you were losing faith by thinking you needed to go to the doctor? That you thought I wasn't having faith in God to fix this. Mm -hmm. I feel stupid about it now. Just... So, so I'm, that's, what we're, that's, that's what we're trying to figure out. Do you think... And I'm not ridiculing this. I just want to know. Do you guys think that that God doesn't want us to use doctors? No. So you, do you think God puts people in places to help us? Yes, I do. I believe that for sure. And you think doctors could be those people? So all still, I, I, I get what you're saying. But, but this is what I'm telling you. Two days ago, I could have looked at this child and I could have said this child has hours to live. Two days ago, I could have looked at this child, and I, cut, I probably would have thought this child has minutes to live. Two days ago, if I'd have seen this child in your hands, being a stranger at Myra, I'd have snatched this child out of your hands and faced the consequences. That's what I'm trying to reason with is that. You, so, but you didn't, you didn't receive the help, and you knew that two days ago, you knew, you just said that, you, that she was probably... What'd you say? Beyond help, or whatever it was two days ago. So what? It's not beyond help. I just... At what point? At what point in this illness did you think there's a good chance she's gonna die? I didn't think at all that she was gonna die. I, I just... How could you not think that? Delusional. I just. I don't have a reason why I couldn't think that I was being such a hopeful mom. I suppose I I don't have a good reason for you. I'm sorry. What was your conversations like with Seth? You said a minute ago that you knew that he didn't want to go to a doctor. Yeah, because well, we discussed it before. That we just just discussed her conditions. Yes. When was the first time you guys discussed that? Maybe a month ago. So a month ago is when. What did you notice a month ago? Because I'm I'm certain you're the one. Because you said that you know Seth didn't want to go. So obviously you're the one that brought up needing to go to the doctor. What did you notice a month ago? That she was almost nine months old and just wasn't filling into her clothing like she should, and and you know we talked about it, and you just just have faith and just we'll keep feeding her like we do, and 
keep nursing her and keep her active, and she'll get there. It's okay, she'll get there. But let me ask you something. If Seth told you that God told him to sacrifice one of your children, would you do it? No. That's what I'm saying, though. By using an extreme example, the detective forces Fusari to face the fact that her excuse doesn't hold water and that she is trying to use a false claim of religious conviction to absolve her of any guilt in Mary's death. I'm, that's what I'm trying to wrap my head around. How many conversations did you have with Seth about this? Not very many. Maybe two at most, just because we didn't want to worry about it. We we trusted God. And Would he get angry talking about it? No, I think he'd be very sure. What would happen? What would he? How would he react if you took him to the took her to the doctor anyway? I'm not sure. It, something like that has never happened. Um, I'm just asking to speculate. I think he would just be concerned that GPS would be called, but mm -hmm. not angry. Just say, okay, just know that you took her to the doctor. Expect GPS to come to the house. He, he's not an angry type person? No. How, no. how is he as far as emotional goes? He, uh, he's not afraid to cry. I'm just going to say that. Does he, he cry a lot? Is he, is he a, would you say that he wears his emotions on his sleeve? I suppose. I yeah. mean, I went when we were going through our, our marriage at the beginning of it and he was very expressive about how um about his feelings and, and how he would like to be treated and how I wasn't excuse me treating him well and and then in return told me he realized that he wasn't being a respectful husband and wasn't treating me well either. So he's very intuitive and he was and expressive, which is Right. So today at nine o'clock, you found very deceased. What time were we called? I don't know. I think it was. Was it eleven? Yeah, it was like a long time. That, why? We called. We called my in-laws first and. The, t the time that the sheriff's department was called to respond to your house was at 12:06. That's when they came, or that's when they were called. That's when 911 was called. That's when 911 was called. Was 12:06. Three hours and six minutes later. My father-in-law said to wait until um, they were close, because they live an hour away. To wait until they were close before we called to make sure we can get there at the same time. That would explain two. That would explain one hour. What about the other two hours and six minutes of waiting? I think that we were in such a state of shock that we just didn't know what to do. Well, let me ask you this. Did you ever look at, at how tiny and sunken and skeletal she looked and say, we're in trouble? Yeah. I think actually it came across my mind today. Did you guys have a discussion about him? No. Did he say anything to you about that? No. Did you? Why, why, why did it come across your mind? What were you thinking? Is that why it took so long to call 911? I've, I've never worked a case that's taken that long to call 911. This has just never happened before or with anyone we knew. Or... By waiting so long to call the police and going so far as to call someone else first, it makes it look like Fusari and Welsh we're trying to cover up something rather than experiencing a shock. We waited for a response from my father-in-law mm -hmm. to see what his advice was. We had no idea what to do. And he said, yes, yeah, you should call the police. We're on our way. Wait until we're close. But but even even by um, your father-in-law, he wasn't even called until around approximately 1030 to 1045. So we're still looking at an hour and a half. It may have been after nine then, because that is a very long time, and it did not feel that long at all. It must have been just before ten then. I'm sorry if I, if I gave you the no, wrong no, time. No, no, no. You, you're not yeah. expected to, to, to check your watch every time you go check something. We're not holding you to all those times. 
I know it was before 10, but it was definitely after 9. That is an excessively long time to just stand around there. That's, so so all right, let's, let's even just give the benefit of the doubt and say it's 10. Okay. That it's 10 o'clock. So, because like you said, you know it was before 10, but we'll just play it safe and say it was 10. Okay. And so 10 o'clock rolls around. You, 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 you check everything. You did CPR for about 10 minutes, according to what you told me. So then what what'd you do for the next two hours? Because well, that's still... That's, well, we waited. Yeah. Um, before you called us. You waited for two hours before we got called. We waited for my in-laws to come. We were trying to contact them. And then we, we got a response. Um, well, we were trying to contact them. Was that like a long process to get all of them? I actually don't know. I'm sorry. I was just... I was just uh, Seth was the one that contacted them. I didn't. Oh, I see. Okay. So I don't know how long it took if any time at all. I was just very, um, very struck. So you said you slept. What else, what other kind of house cleaning did you do? Because you said your mother law doesn't like a dirty house. <laughs> um, the kids, just to distract them, I just had them clean their room, put your toys away. and. Did they know what was going on? We told them, but I don't. So then they cleaned their rooms, and then what did you and Seth do? Slept, and then we hugged and cried, and we just sat on the couch and just, just were silent. Yeah, but you know, there's just some odd thing. Obviously, you know, you know this case is odd, and you never once expressed to Seth that, hey, this doesn't, this isn't good. Look at her. Look at her. No, I didn't. Did he ever? Did he ever even make a comment about her body? You guys, he looked at her, and he never, he never said anything about it. No. You know how he described her to us on the phone? I can, you can listen to the 911. He described her as, nope, she's dead as a doornail. He gets, he gets like that when he's very, very upset. He's just, just distraught. And he, I cry, and yeah, he cries, but he... In his interview... Welsh never shows the type of emotion that Fusari describes. He comes across as very uncaring about his daughter's death and sees it as more of an inconvenience than anything else. Try to be strong for everyone. Let me ask you a question. You, you had been through some training, or early childhood development, schooling, and stuff like that, correct? Yes. Did you ever receive or go through any kind of like CPR training or, or anything like that? I have, yes. Okay. Let me ask you this, if you were driving down the road, kids are in the back seat in their car seats and you're driving down the road and you witness a car accident, what what are you going to do? And and there's people that are bloody there at the scene. What are you going to do? I and my kids are with me in the car. Mhm. Mm well, I if there's safe for me to pull over, I pull over. I would check to see if anyone's responsive and then I call the police so I can let them know what's going on and if there's something I could do, I I try, but I know that if there's any sort of injury that I'm not familiar with, I can't move the body. Okay, so you know that you can call 911, right? Yes. So then why not call 911 immediately when your child's not moving? That's what I don't understand. I think because it happened to me personally. I was just, it was my, my little girl. I just, in shock, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for you. I was just so... Never can imagine that could happen. J Jason and I have been doing this a long time, and I understand, and I've seen it time and time again, everybody deals with stress and reacts to things differently. But if there's one thing that I've, I've seen in the course of, of doing this job for a long time is there's usually never a hesitation to pick up the phone and call 911. That is a pretty ingrained, pretty mm -hmm. rapid, basic life saving response that is ingrained in everybody, especially in our country because of our emergency medical system that we have. When and did you first teach your kids about nine one one? When did I try it? When did you first teach your children about nine one one? less than a year ago. Okay. So when you're doing CPR you don't scream to Seth, call nine one one. No. And I wow, well, and I know that that's like the Second step, or the first, the first step actually. What? Did you think by calling 911 that he would think your faith was less? No, not at all, actually. I, okay. We just, he called his dad first. Yeah. 
wiping the spit up from her face, and then he went to contact his parents. I don't know how long that took. I was just, just after she wasn't responding, I was just sitting there rocking her. I don't know for how long. I, I have no idea for how long. And then after he got off the phone with his dad, um, his dad said, okay, wait until we are close. So, and then call the police so we can get there at the same time they do. So we can help with any anything, I suppose, legally. So, so um, the two plus hours of time that went by from discovery till 911. All, all I know, and I'm just asking if you can think of anything else, all I know of is 10 minutes of CPR and sitting on the couch and sweeping the house. Is there any other activity that occurred? Again, some of the stuff is just so weird, we're just trying to make sense of it. I understand. I, if I were in your position, I, I would... I wouldn't understand it either, and I'm having trouble gauging it as well. As well. I, I spent quite some time just, just, just holding her and just, just rocking her, and then I put her back down on her bed, and I put her, put her blanket on her, and then I just checked on the kids to make sure they were clean in the room, and then... Did you put any additional clothing on her when you put her back in the crib? No, I didn't. So what was in the crib is exactly what was in there? You didn't change anything. Oh, I'm sorry. By clothing, I just assumed you meant what she was wearing on her. That was left on her. I added her. I covered her up fully, and I added her little head, her little head blanket. You? What do you mean you covered her fully with clothing or oh, a with blanket? a gray blanket. Okay. Was that blanket in the crib prior or not? Yes, crib? up to her knees. I, I put it. I wrap it around her knees down to her feet, just so there's no more chances. Over the head pulling, yeah. she's never done that before. Anyway. And what about this thing that you were talking about, the head pillow or whatever? Where was that? It at? was just a comfy blanket. It was on the side on the rocking chair. I just watched. So that's the only thing that wasn't in the crib? Was that one? Yeah. And she had her polar bear in there, but it was by her feet. So, um. During the time that Fusari is struggling to account for, she or Welsh may have left the house to gather a stock of baby food for the police to find so they would believe Mary was being fed. When you were going through school, Jason was talking about the, the hitting on the CPR and stuff like that. Did you receive, what other kind of like developmental training did you receive getting your education in, in childhood development? Um, physical Nutrition, yeah. all that. Um, so I mean, what yeah. else? Lesson, I'm sorry, uh, meal plans. In terms of how much that's why I should be eating, and I was I was happy with how much she was eating. She was eating so much. That's like this is such a surprise to me. And is there an actual condition that prevents weight gain? Did you ever Google that? There are multiple reasons why a baby would not gain weight. They are serious and need to be under a doctor's close supervision. No. Maybe. And maybe I didn't, I didn't find anything. Because I, 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 would, I would probably know, and, and if a doctor was... You would have found a lot, I think, if you Googled it. I think you'd, I think you'd have found a lot on that. Let me ask you this. Do you think that you realize too much on WebMD and, and Google as a parent, instead of actually going to a doctor? Just an opinion question. I'm I'm just curious. I do. Because you 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 kind of brought that up a couple times, and I'm just wondering. If I like replace it. What? Yeah, I mean, do you kind of try to self-diagnose your children instead of taking them to a doctor? You just look oh. it all up on WebMD and Google and try and figure it out yourself, or? No, I do that more for myself. Um, the only thing I actually to feed whatever age she was at at the time to help her gain more weight. Um. And, you know, potatoes, etc. So when you were going through early childhood development education, it was that to be a teacher or a preschool teacher or daycare owner, operator type that that store, right? Yeah, it was it was to be a a preschool teacher. So I know I know I'm sure this was addressed. So what are some of the things they they told you to look out for if you did have a student that came to school and and had a um, failure to thrive? 
So I'm curious. Not eating. Um, what physical characteristics? Thin. Bones. Mm -hmm. Like sunken in cheeks. Ribs. Ribs showing. Thin arms. Yeah. Did you see those things in your own child? So when you went through this education and you were, you, and they, they told you to look out for that stuff, what what was supposed to be your plan of action if you ever saw a child come to school like that? To call Child Protective Services. Because you had a what to report? You'd have a duty, right? Yeah. Did you, so, so, but you didn't help your child? No. No, I don't. I was helping her by feeding her and nursing her and playing with her. But, but two, two to four days ago, you knew it was really bad. Tuesday. Tuesday, you knew it was really bad. And so that is what prompted you more than ever to be checking and looking to make sure she wiggles when you move a door and because of how she looks. I did it every day, regardless. You did? That matters. Okay, yeah, it does matter, absolutely. Every, every day, every night. No, no, nobody, Tatiana, for, for one second, I don't want you to think that anybody is trying to say that you didn't love your child. No. Okay. But I am going to be blatantly honest with you. You didn't pro provide the necessary care for your daughter. Y you didn't. Do you and think you did? And we're just trying to figure out why. Do, do you think you did right? It's a very hard question to answer because she's dead. She'll know that I tried. I fed her so But what much. stopped you? Tr truly, what stopped you? From what? From get from getting her help a month ago. Was it embarrassment? Was it fear? Was it? I think, what was it? I think it was it was fear of CPS. I I think that I just thought that I was overreacting, and it was just all in my head because I, I I tend I tend to, to overthink things when it's not necessary, and I just thought there was another one of those. This belief comes from Welsh who was constantly belittling Fusari's opinions to enforce her belief that he was always in the right. And our other two children are just so healthy. and Or am I delusional about that, too? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't as know. far as they appear, I mean, they... What? But here's the difference, though. You just said it right there. You just said it. As far as they appear. But we know it hasn't appeared healthy. So that it's not a delusion. It's an observation that your other two children clearly appear healthy, right? And clearly didn't. That's comparing apples and oranges. So it shows that your observations were working. You weren't delusional. You know that these two appear healthy and this one didn't. So we need to go and get this one fixed. Figure out what's wrong with her. We have more time for her to, to fill out. Mm -hmm. well, let me ask you this: did, did you did you plan on having each of your children? No. No. Oops. We knew we were having unprotected unprotected sex, and we knew we were going to have a baby from it. We just weren't saying, okay, this day we're going to make the child, and she will be born this day. Right. But real. Oops. Tasha, we I hate to interrupt. We have to step out real quick, though. Can we get you a water or anything? Well, uh, we're just going to just slide over real quick and talk to Seth oh, and yes, just confirm some I'm of the stuff. I'm sure you guys can He's probably sure. he's sitting on ice right now, probably wondering what in the world's going on. So, Do you need to use the restroom as well? Um, I, I suppose I should. It's been quite some time. All right, just, just know, we'll get you some water. While you're using the bathroom, I'll walk you to the bathroom. I'll get you some water. Just know that we're going to be down. We're, we're, so as long as we've been in here with you, you're probably going to be sitting in here. We're going to be down there talking to him. So 
that way at least you're not wondering what's going on. It's just we're talking to him, trying to get his side of this now, okay? Are we in trouble? We don't no, know. we don't know that. You guys are going home the same way you came. We told you that. You're yeah. not being arrested. All we're doing is we're just information gathering. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say that, no, you're not in trouble, because I don't know that yet. It has, this whole case has to still be reviewed. There's a whole process that has to go through. Um, hey, put her letter down real quick. We're going to get another detective in here to, to escort you down there real quick, okay? Uh, just just because it's a secured facility, Larry. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. So Seth basically said the same thing he said. Except for Seth, that he he did say that you'd have to strap him and his family down to the table before a doctor could touch you guys. You don't agree with that? I. You don't have that same belief? I do for the most part, like except for the. I mean, if somebody had a broken leg. He tends to be a bit dramatic. Um, he grew up reading Shakespeare. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe you can tell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's um, a smart guy, though. Very. Yeah. And he's, he's very passionate and dramatic, so I'm not surprised he said that. But um, So he said that his mom, starting two about a month ago, has been telling him, I don't know if she told you, that, oh, yeah. that that child needs some medical care. Yes, she has. How many times has she told him that? I don't know how many times she's told him. How many times she told you that? Once that I can remember. Okay. And how long ago was that? About a month ago. Okay. When she, we last saw her. Now, he said that she was just at your house, not this last Sunday, but the Sunday before that. that yeah. Oh. I mean, maybe, because we went to Golden Corral, so it could have been a few days before that, and he could be mixing Sundays up. Okay. Um, but it was definitely within the month. It's just uh, dates are a little. So within the last, she was at your house. Yeah, and, and she what? still insisted on. She still insisted on. I mean, how many times did she insist on it? Um, it was once that I only recall one time. It could have been twice. Sometimes because I um. I, I may have brushed it off the first time she mentioned it. She's like, oh, no, we're not going to talk to her. Just... Oh. So that first time that you may have brushed off would have been how long ago? I do recall, actually, when we went to her house for... Are looking fuller, so at least there's that. Just keep on feeding her. She was saying that because of her weight. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you guys you discussed her weight with you before? I only recall that being the first real time. Okay. When was the second time? Um, when she came to visit, I within the month. I'm. I just said it was it was the Sunday before last. It may have been, and I could we could have went to Golden Corral the Sunday before. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. And what did she say that time? She suggested and said that um, if we were going to, she, she, excuse me, she suggested that we noted that the cheeks are redder and fuller. So I um, thought that she was taking her food well. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to try to get you guys out of here right now. I'm just going to step out and talk to him real quick and just make sure we don't have more follow up questions so we don't have to keep bothering you tonight. So let me just, okay. just take a couple minutes with him. Yeah, no, we'll be right back with you, okay? Um, I did use the restroom already. I'm sorry. I just, I really had to go. Oh, no, so, that's, that's our mistake. Okay. We, we asked someone that was in there, and he did this to us, and he must have forgotten about you. Oh, so. that's fine. That's our mistake. Okay. Sorry. Welsh's family, in particular, will have to be questioned.
especially on the point of why they didn't call child services when they saw that Welch and Fusari were going to allow Mary to suffer. Chef's going to come in here and sit with you. It's going to be a couple minutes. One of my partners is going to run you guys home for me, okay, because he's working late already. I left so. my salad in the back of your car. I'm sorry. You left your what? My salad. It's just garbage. That's all right. It, you're not, you don't need it? No. I'll, th I'll throw it away. It's okay. So I'll, uh, uh if you just a couple minutes, okay? Okay. Hi, baby. Hi. How you doing? I'm happy that I'm with you now. Me too. Did you talk to your parents at all while you were waiting? How much going on? Yeah, we're not. Because we're such bad parents. Not even allowed to talk to them. In an unusual twist, Welch and Fusari have been allowed to stay in the same room, watching them interact might give the detectives more insight into what happened and if Welsh is coercing or threatening Fusari in any way. Welsh, rather than showing any sign that he is upset about losing his daughter, is instead sulking about how he is being treated like he is a bad parent. It took so long to ask me all about the kids, all three of their birth weight, height, and eating habits, and developmental skills. Go to your pee and poop. And then I think that was a distraction because right after that I was just like, why did it take you so long to call? I just kept berating with that and waiting for the answer. So you saw the what? To call the police after uh -huh. finding out. I told you like six times. I was waiting for the lawyer to be there because we knew that this would happen. Welsh is irritated by some of Fusari's statements to the detectives, knowing that they will make him look bad. We could see your parents, but I said lawyers. And we were just, then what'd you do while you were waiting? I called off work, I, I slept, and I sat and cried. Why? Uh, and listen to this, baby. You, their job is to fill cells their job so they can fill two cells right now and that's passion, maybe they were angry like it sounded like they were trying to I don't know if this is movie money but like separate us that's what they're doing for what? trying to drag a wedge in between and then hope somebody accuses the other they've lost a child and Fusari is distressed but Welsh doesn't offer any support in fact, he physically withdraws from her and tells her that he won't be discussing the subject for the rest of the day, leaving Fusari emotionally isolated. That's why they came at you first. Because they know me. They can tell by looking at me. Yeah. They're going to do shit to me. So if I make a new breakdown, I'll accuse you of me is who they're looking for. What am I going to do? I don't even know what's going to happen. We go home and we get really baked and we, I really like to not talk about it at all anymore today. Okay. It's so terrible talking. It's so terrible. Can't ever do this again. We at least got to take her. We got to, there's problems. We got to take him to the doctor at least to see. Okay. Yep. Oh, sorry. She checked on her. Well, that I'm not. That's well. Uh, I was counting down. It's hilarious. I think they must have heard me on the phone. Because I told my mom at 7.30, I'm getting up out of here. 
um, getting us out of here. And that's exactly when they came through the door to come talk to me. Wow. Yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll wait for, I'll wait till 7.30, but we're not under arrest. I'm not being charged. I'm here under my own compulsion. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm free to go, so. Your parents are still dead? No, they went home. They had to go meet with a CPS worker in Grand Haven. But they could do that? Yeah. And I was just about to walk out of there. When he said, hey, come on down here. So I was going to be like, oh, he said five minutes. It's going to be another two hours. You know, he had me put my phone outside the door. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I went out. I got it. I went out. I got it. So, like, I'll let you just hold me in here indefinitely, but, uh, with my permission while leaving me communication with. I saw those. I saw, like, papers in the bottle cap and the lighter was out there. Like, they told me to really have someone escort me to the bathroom, and it was, like, 20, 30 minutes. I didn't really have to go. So I just opened the door and I went to the bathroom. <laughs> they're, they're trying to make you seem a lot more like a prisoner than you really are. Right now, you're here, under your own, you're here under your own compulsion, and I'm not your own. Yeah. It's really not much they can do if we wanted to walk out right now. We're doing this as a show. Sitting in jail as a result of Welch's poor medical decisions should be a hint to Fusari that he isn't an expert in the law either, but she is either easily swayed by his competence or so used to giving in to him that she doesn't bother to argue. And not even for them, but for probably when we have to go up in front of a judge. See, it's all they want. They want a charge. They want somebody. There's got to be money involved. There's got to be a financial transaction. It's like you can't, you can't could just bury a dead body. you got to, you got to pay somebody. There's got to be. What are you doing here, guy? I don't know what to tell you. You know, like it was a junk full of growth hormones and steroids. I mean, I'm sorry, you know. I don't know. You think I'm happy about it? Well, shows the most emotion over the fact that he will have to pay for his daughter's burial. Yeah, they were kind of like pushing me about the whole doctor's thing. I was like, you know what the number one leading cause of death in this country is? Kind of stopped. Because they were only in there with me for about like 10 minutes. Was it? They were trying to squeeze you and get you to say something. That I did something. Oh, they weren't. Just probably let everyone hear it for so long. So you took my phone, too. They have it right now. Mm-hmm. And tomorrow's Friday, great. So, Friday weekend. Huh? 
Huh? They're really insistent on me getting it. I'd like to know where it is. Is it for you? <laughs> It's like it's a murder case, man. It's an accident. I don't know what the one that's putting somebody in jail going to do. Right. It's going to fill a cell. That's what they're here to do. For profit system. Ooh. Somebody. And I said, you haven't spoken to him then. He may have been shy, but he hasn't interacted with anybody, so he wasn't. He wasn't interacted with to be verbal. It was. Dude, put me on fucking trial. I'll put the whole system on. I'll put the whole system on trial. Put me on trial. You don't know who you're fucking with. Neither Welsh nor Fusari seem to grasp that they are accountable for their daughter's death and that there will indeed be a trial. So you gotta understand with cops, they're not really like, they're just trying to get somebody to confess to a crime. That's all they're trying to do. They don't care if they lie. They don't care how they make it. They don't care. You just don't take it personally. And you just, yep, whatever. I don't care what you do. Mm -hmm. I like to put it together. That was nice. Probably for the people we see. Probably. I don't care. The thing is, they want something so bad, but they don't want to have anything. They, they, you know, they could get negligent, probably get negligent in bed, child endangerment at best, which happens. Have fun. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried to go go into court about that with my mom. Okay. I'm not. doesn't bother me. I don't want to, but I'm also not a frown. It doesn't, it's not so bad. I mean, it's some sort of murder charge. Oh, goodness. I don't want to call it. They try to watch the religious extremist angle with me, too. Super. They thought I was trying to. They're looking for somebody to say something crazy. They're looking for the crazy. That's what they're looking for. Yeah. They're looking for their way in. And then they put me up, but we know you were in town, too. Oh, my God. Just here to help, Tati. Okay. Just 
Actually, never mind. I think they're just here to help. Keep them in there. Well, yeah, I tell you. If you didn't say it so much, I'd maybe believe you. <laughs> Who are you trying to convince? Throughout their conversation, Welsh and Fusari forget that they are being recorded. Yeah, I was not going to let us sit in these rooms all night without calling my mom and seeing what I could do. Sorry, guys. Try and, we're just trying to make sure we have all the paperwork and everything that we need to get you guys out of here. Um, I already did a form like this with your husband, so I'll go over it with you. Um, your phone was back at the house, and we collected that as part of our search warrant back at your house. Um, so there's two ways that we can go through your phone, okay? I can either get you to sign a consent form, or I can get a search warrant signed by a judge to go through it. So it, it's completely up to you. If you are willing to sign a consent form, I have a form here that I can go over with you and allow you to read, and if you're willing to... Um, we can do that, so it's up to you. I don't mind signing it. I'm just curious as to why you need to go through that. It's just it, it, so part of any investigation, people, most everybody has a cell phone on them, mm -hmm. and we would just be looking at communication, verifying timelines as far as when he called his dad and oh, if there was any text message conversations between you guys regarding... The, the well-being of your daughter, that, I mean, it's just that stuff, just to verify that everything is on the up and up. Okay. Okay? T-A-T-I-N-A? A -A. A after the I is A-N-A. T-I-A-N-A. -A. What was your middle name again? Elena, E-L-E-N-A. And your birthday? Just want to read that real quick, and then if you're okay with that, just sign right there. So what I'll do is, um, like I told Seth this already, I'm going to try and get both of your phones then over to the lab first thing in the morning. And I will get them back to you because all they're going to do is image it and then I can give your phone back and then they basically put the information from the phone on a disc and then I can go through it at a later time. So we try to get people their phones back as quick as we can. So it's not like I'm going to be holding on to this for months, okay? Okay. Or even weeks. Um, is there a passcode on your phone? No. No? Okay. Unlock it. Okay. All right. We finally, we had some car shuffling going on around. The guy that's actually going to give you a ride is my sergeant that was in talking with you guys here with me. Okay. So um, I think he's just grabbing his keys and we're going to get you out of here. Okay? Welsh and Fusari will be allowed to go home for now, although their remaining children will not be released into their custody. She looked like shit when she was dead, too. She was so gone. 
No, I'm not trying to get it. I'm just saying that's why. That's one of the reasons why it's such a bad picture of her. Dude, she looked so bad. Well, we had the phone and the dates and stuff. And, and they won't. They'll just. Yeah. Right. They believe what they saw. They showed me a picture of her. And it didn't look real. I mean, she was dead overnight, and then she was sitting there all day dead, and then they're gonna take that? Of course. I think there's room at like 80 degrees. Of course. Cook ya! Please just let's try. Let's try not to think about it. It and her and this just for the rest of the day. Okay. Just for tonight. Let's just please just try to wipe it away. Wanting to wipe away what happened to Mary is unbelievably selfish and is yet another example of why no child should ever be in Welsh's care. It's been such a torture all day. Yeah. If I get those phones done. Like later tomorrow, you think that you'll be at home? Mm -hmm. There's you won't be at your parents in Grand Haven or anything. So no. So if I just drive, because I'm not gonna have a way to call you guys. So no, if I just I'll be come, home. come up there, you guys will be there. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Steve, do you have a day off anyway? Uh, you can probably take the rest of the week off or something. I'm glad your parents are there. Uh, I just don't even talk about it. Not even that? Okay. Sorry. No, I just, I just, I know. I'm What a mess. I can't tell if there's not even go for another day or two. Yeah, everything's just two minutes and five minutes and just grab it. I'm puffing himself up about how I only know how to tell the
don't know where God is or why on this one, Tati. I'll tell you what. Here's some awards I get for my service. Sorry, I need to stop. This gets a little tiring sometimes. When? This morning. Oh, when you went to go with the clothes? Yeah. Oh, what? She's getting married. He is the father for two children. Oh, okay. They've been together ten years. Um, she said she would have got back together. Good. Yeah. He's still a little quiet about his his walk, but mm -hmm. she's encouraging him. Her father lives three miles away, but is very hateful to him. Ten years ago, when he was upset about that, he fell on him. Every time Fusari tells Welsh about something else that the detectives have asked, he becomes more upset, believing that he is the one being victimized. Ten years ago. She's just praying that he'll forgive and come to the way. She had a great setup in the backyard for all the kids she could kids there. At least they left us the truck. Oh, there's a ticket on the machine. Great. I might actually have some respect for them. I just told my mom, I was like, how many dipshit cops can be staring around, standing around an expired life and display tag and not even notice? Yeah, they went all out if they put a ticket on there. They had some future. It's kind of like a world. You're all scared. Can you keep them in the room? Yeah, I tried to get him before anybody showed up. I figured they'd probably kill him too. Alright, can we, can we get out of here? You spring me a ride for a ride down here. Can we? They were hoping if they got you alone in a room and let you sit for a couple hours. They let you sit for a while before they came in and talked to you, or they pretty much come right in. No, they let me sit for a while. 20 minutes, that's not very long. They're in here with you for a while. Yeah, because they're just trying to with sick time details, eating and pooping habits from like birth to now, and the kids developmentally and cognitively and <laughs> physically. It's all food. Mm-hmm. I can't care what people like think of you or stuff, because if you yeah. do, you'll get trapped and yeah. shit like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm they're just trying to, yeah, they're just trying to butter you up. Can I start with the you guys ready to go? Yes, sir. All right, I'll give you a ride back up there. Thank you. You want another cup or anything? Or? Oh, no. Okay. Tatiana Fusari was found guilty on charges of first-degree murder 
and first-degree child abuse. She was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. She was also sentenced to 15 to 30 years on the child abuse charge. That sentence will run concurrently with the life sentence. Fusari's remaining children, including one born while she was in jail, have been placed in homes, and Fusari has been stripped of her parental rights. That'll do it for today. If you like this video and want to support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below where you can do just that. Thank you for watching, and stay safe.